Okay, hello everyone. Uh, this is going to be a short video. I'm just going to run through the electronics tray that's uh, supplied with the ready to fly hex H2Os, what it looks like when it's built up with all of the components, and uh, what yours might look like um, if you're building the hex H2O yourself. So it gives you a good idea of just where to lay things out and how, how things should be positioned. So the electronics tray sits uh, like this inside the hex H2O. So this is the top facing the top of the board, and then this will be the underside where the gimbal will hang down. Uh, it's fixed into place. There are three mounts um, at the back. Uh, they slot, the, the electronics board slots over and pushes back onto there, and then there are three location bolts at the front. So it sits down, pushes back, and then you do up the three bolts at the front. So again, to take it out, you'd undo the three bolts at the front, and then pull forward and lift out. So it's nice and easy to get in and out if you need to. Um, the other good thing about this is you, you can get it out and you can actually pull it about halfway out of the body without having to disconnect any cables. So if you do need to, to do anything under here, you don't have to unplug everything. Although if you did, it's not a problem. You can, you can remove the whole thing as it is here. So let's just run through the components on the board. So the most important is you've got your flight controller. So this is the NASA V2 flight controller. Um, as you can see, it's located uh, on its own location tray. Okay, that keeps it straight and level, and it's fitted with uh, double-sided 3M tape and then cable tied into place. Uh, running off of that, you have the cables that go to the Optima 7 receiver and the antenna for that receiver. That then receives all the data from your transmitter, from your Aurora 9 transmitter. Back over to this side. At the bottom here, you've got the control board for the gimbal. That's the uh, Zenmoose GoPro gimbal. Sitting on top of that, you've got the PMU module for your NASA V2 flight controller. Then running off of that, you have the mini OSD, which is supplied as standard with the Hex H2O ready to fly, which transmits all of your data down to your monitor on the ground. Uh, then you'll see you have our fan. So once connected up, when you power on the Hex H2O, this will pump air across all of the components and help regulate temperatures, etc., on the board. Then finally, you've got the gimbal mount itself. Um, so it's four screws that's holding it on through the tray. Then you've got your white grommets, which are fitted. They come as standard fitted on the gimbal. And you have two retaining clips. Um, the retaining clips, uh, when you first fit your gimbal, we would advise that you don't connect the retaining clips, do a couple of test flights, just in case you might find that you want to swap the grommets over for um, some different ones you've got in, in the uh, gimbal package, you get another two sets of grommets. They're all different strengths. So you may need to fine tune and adjust if you want to, but we fit with the white ones as standard. Once you've done your test flights and you're happy, then you can put the retaining clips on these two to hold the gimbal in place. Just remember that once you put the clips on, the only way to get them off is to cut them and throw them in the bin. So that's why we advise that you do a couple of test flights first. But you are supplied with four. You only need two at a time. So you put the two are in there now. If you end up having to bin those, you have got another two that are supplied with the gimbal. Uh, a couple of other things that you might find, may find on this board, depending on what configuration you've ordered from us. You may have the DT, DJI BTU module, which would be sitting on here. That allows you to connect to the NISA flight controller via your iPhone. So it's an app that's downloadable from DJI. And as I say, it enables you to connect and make adjustments to the flight controller while you're out on the, on the field. If you haven't got that uh, module, then the way to do it would be to connect it to your computer via the supplied lead. Um, the way to do that is this is the, the LED module um, that shows you, it lights up and shows you different flight modes, etc. That's fitted at the back of the Hex H2O. So if you wanted to connect it to the assistant software, you just pull that off with the Velcro, fit your lead into here, plug it into your computer and you can make adjustments. If you've got the BTU, you don't need to do it that way. You can do all the adjustments via your iPhone. So it's a convenience thing. The other thing you may find on here is if you've ordered the iPad Ground Station, which is another app that you can download for your iPad and fly waypoints, etc. That would be fitted on the top side here. Uh, that's pretty much it. You won't find anything else on there. Uh, but as you can see, there's quite a lot of room. Um, this is how we like to lay it out. It's entirely up to you how you lay it out. Obviously, if you're using the NASA flight controller, this is where this needs to be, but everything else you can, you can fit as you see fit. But this is just a layout that works for us and, and we think should work well for you. 
Uh, then everything's connected up to an XT60 connector, which then plugs into the wiring loom on the hex H2O to power the whole board. And as I say, the LED module that comes off here and just Velcros in place at the back of the frame. So that is the hex H2O electronics board.